Here's a little bit of an introduction to the multivariable chain rule. Uh, and I like to think of this in, in terms of a physical example to start out. We've got a bug that's crawling on a hot plate that uh, has variable temperatures. So we've got a temperature, T, let's say, is f of x, y. And uh, it's crawling around with r of t, the position vector, let's say explicitly x of t and y of t describes its position. So here's the red path of the bug, and then here's these black are the contours of t. Uh, let's say to be definite, let's say, well, you know, my, my students long time ago, ago objected, you shouldn't call it a hot plate, that's totally inhumane. Let's say it's a really nice warm plate, um, it's like a spa, okay, so it's like a warm spa for the bug. That's much more humane. Um, and so let's say it goes from like um, 30 degrees Celsius, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, to like 36 degrees Celsius, something like that. Okay, so a nice kind of body temperature. Maybe it's a mosquito that likes body temperature. Okay, so what we'd like to know is the rate of change. We've got the temperature depends on the position, but then the position depends on the time. So let me draw a diagram, very common diagram for that. The temperature depends on these two variables x and y through the function f and then x and y both depend on t through this function, the position function, the r function. Okay, And notice that I'm trying to be a little careful about the difference between um, variables, the temperature, the x, the y, and the t, and functions, the things that, that relate. Here's um, the temperature as a function of these two, here's these two as a function of the time. So the functions relate variables to each other, and variables are the actual quantities that are related. Um, and different notations for the chain rule either use this kind of language or this kind of language. We're going to more use this kind of language, but it often relates to, to stuff like this. Okay. So um, what's going to happen? How would we get? Well, here's the, the question. Here's We would like to get the rate of change of temperature with respect to time. Okay. And the, what we're going to assume is given is that I know, let's say at this point, well, if we need a name for that, we'll call it x naught, y naught. Um, let's assume that we know how the temperature is varying at that point. If we went at that point and we took partial derivatives, in other words, we kind of walked in specified directions, what's going to do there? Those are the partial derivatives of t with respect to x and t with respect to y. But we also need to know how fast the bug's going and where. If he's going along a contour line, he probably shouldn't get a lot of change in temperature. If he's going this way, he's going to go down in temperature. If he goes this way, he's going to go up. Well, those are expressed by the components of the velocity. Okay, so it's, there hopefully would be a formula for this in terms of these four quantities. All right, well, it turns out to come out very, very easily um, from, let's see, I don't have a lot of room. I'll erase this, okay from the differential stuff that was in the last section. Okay, So I'm just going to run the clock a very short time dt. Okay, Think of that as very, very short. Okay, And then I'm going to just ask how much uh, change in temperature do I get? And that's going to be d big T question mark there. Now this isn't literally the exact change, change in temperature, but I'm not really, it doesn't really matter to that. Bec uh, that doesn't really matter. That's not very good English. That doesn't really matter because what I'm eventually going to want is the derivative. That's the limit as dt goes to zero of the ratio of d big t over d little t. So I can think of this as, okay, it's going to be just an approximation, but the approximation between that, that's approximately the same as the real change in temperature. That approximation gets better and better and better as dt goes to zero, and that's what I'm interested in in the first place. If you want the careful version, it's in the textbook, um, but I'm going to kind of ignore the subtleties. Okay. So, hey, let's see. Well, let's just do, look at it. I've got this two-stage thing. Uh, I still need this picture. Should have put it more compactly. Okay. If I run the clock by dt, can I predict roughly how much x and y change? Absolutely. dx is going to be the x velocity times how much dt changed. Remember, the, the Leibniz notation, this d notation, makes everything look like you're just canceling fractions, although we'll see there's a bit of a subtlety. Okay? Similarly, the change in y, at least to a very good approximation, 
that's engendered by running the clock by tt is just the speed in the y variable, the velocity, the velocity in the y variable, rather, times dt. Okay. So that's going to tell me, it's basically saying, okay, I'm moving along a little vector here, dx comma dy. Okay. Now, this is exactly what the differential uh, form of the tangent plane equation is supposed to say. Okay. It says that if I have a function t equals f of xy, and I want to know how much to the first order approximation, the temperature changes, it's exactly given by how sensitive the temperature is to a change in x times how much x changed, plus how sensitive is the temperature to a change in y times how much y changed. That's exactly one form of the tangent plane equation. It's the differential form of the tangent plane equation. It focuses on the change in everything, not just the, the actual value, but it focuses on the changes. And that's what calculus is about. It's, it's the study of change. Okay, I'm just going to substitute these guys into here. Okay, let's see. I want to leave most of this still. Okay, so dt is going to be the sensitivity with respect to x times dx. I'm going to write that suspiciously high up in the air because I don't want to rewrite too much. I'm going to rewrite that. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. There we go. I always forgot where, what step I was at. Okay. That's just substituting in the fact that it wasn't some random dx and dy that I chose. It was given the clock was running, and given I've got some explicit functions x and y that determine the, the actual motion of this bug, I have to have this as the dx, and I have to have this as the dy. Okay. Now, here we go. I didn't actually want the actual change in dt. I wanted the rate of change. That's really easy. You just divide by dt, and these go away. Okay. Now, if you're wondering, that seemed a little too easy. You can look in the book for a more careful presentation. Careful presentation focuses a little bit more on, okay, you really should actually pay attention to how good an approximation this is and make sure that they really do come together in the end when the dt goes to zero. Trust me, it works. Okay, so here we go. Do, do, do. There's the multivariable chain rule. It says the rate of change of the final quantity with respect to the initial quantity in this kind of setting, and there's going to be more complicated settings that you can look at in the book. I don't think I'll do a video about them right now anyway. Well, I won't include them in this video. The rate of change of the final quantity with respect to initial is the sum of two terms. That's the really new thing in multivariable calculus. But notice we've, we've had this sum. That sum really came straight from the tangent plane formula. That's not a new thing. That came from tangent planes and differentials. Okay, But it's a sum of two terms. Each of them says, what's the sensitivity of the final quantity to the intermediate quantity times the actual rate of change of how fast is that intermediate cha quantity changing, plus the sensitivity of the final quantity to this other intermediate quantity times how fast is that intermediate quantity actually changing. The reason it's a sum is that there's two different and independent ways that a change in the t variable, the time here, the, the, the the original independent variable, can affect the t, the big T, the, the final variable, the dependent variable, um, through these two intermediaries. And so it's a sum of these two guys. So the Leibniz notation is a little bit weird um, that uh, we might think, we might think that it would just be this that it seems like the d's kind of cancel out. Although the fact that we're using the partial and the, the, the round d and the non-round d here suggests, ooh, maybe there's something weird here. Okay, um, You could convince somebody, oh, that looks like the fractions cancel. Okay, That's the one thing that you don't, the, the pitfall you don't want to fall into. You really have to have both of these guys because a change in the time running the clock forward, it changes the x-coordinate and it changes the y-coordinate. And t, of course, depends on both those variables. So you need to re record the sensitivity both here and here. So to finish it up real quick, not getting too long, here's the kind of problem you would have. You'd be given, or one of the kinds of problems. Um, if I give you the function x, y, and f absolutely explicitly in formulas, this actually is a little bit underwhelming because you could just actually calculate f of t directly. And there's some problems in the book like that, and it, they kind of give you the ability to check things, cross-check things. But the most interesting problem is where I just give you these, these four numbers, okay? Suppose that dt dx is 2 degrees Celsius per centimeter, and dt dy 
is minus 4 degrees Celsius per centimeter. So it's more sensitive to a change in the y variable, um, and it goes down. Ooh, you know what? Actually, let me make it um, according to this picture. That's actually going to be good. So if I increase x, I'm increasing, decreasing the temperature. That's going to be negative, OK? And that's going to be positive. OK, that's good. So here, that's corresponding. Oh, no, these are both negative. Uh, shoot. Oh, well, that's fine. I wanted to record the picture. So this says that if I increase x, I'm going to be decreasing the temperature. And if I increase y, I'm again going toward the colder zone. I'm going to be decreasing the temperature. OK. And suppose that um, the bug is moving. Let's see. This arrow looks like it's going to the left and up. So dx dt, let's say it's minus 3 centimeters per second. It's a pretty fast bug. dy dt, let's say that is plus 2 centimeters per second. OK. So what's the rate of change that the of temperature that the bug experiences as a function of time? It's really easy. It's just this times this. That's going to be plus 6. And notice that the units cancel, as they must, degrees Celsius per second. And then minus 8 degrees Celsius per second. And it will be minus 2 degrees Celsius per second. OK. So the computations are really simple.